Hot Pot, your favorite cookery show. Did you actually know that there is more chicken population on Earth than there are human beings? Now, there are approximately 25.9 billion chicken on Earth compared to the 7.9 billion people on this little blue planet. Now, ladies and gentlemen, today on the very first, I will repeat that again, on the very first episode of The Hot Pot, a food show on West Nile TV that brings to you the most mouth-watering foods in West Nile and beyond. And today we're at Yevra Hotel and Restaurant here in Arua City. And we are going to bring to you nothing but a whole roast chicken. This is a recipe unlike any other. If you are a fan of chicken, now there is no reason for you to move away from your TV set. Join me, Mahajub Muzamil, as I take you through what roast chicken looks like here in Arua City, West Nile region. Now come on, let's go. Hot Pot, your favorite cookery show. I'm called Desa Moli. Uh, I'm in Yevra guest house and uh, right now we're in the kitchen department and we're, I've been helping uh, Yevra with cooking and today we want to cook some other items and if you come to Yevra you can find dishes like uh, Italian dishes things like uh, uh, ravioli, spaghetti bolognese and you, you can find lasagna it depends on if you want vegetable and if you want meat or chicken lasagna you can find them here and uh, things like stuffed turkey, stuffed chicken and uh, uh, chicken Maryland, basket chicken, whole fried fish, you can find them at Yevra uh, if you come to eat with us. And today here we are trying to prepare some dishes. We want to prepare three courses of meal and uh, our three courses of meal and the first course of meal is going to be macaron with cheese and mint sauce and then our second course which will be the main course which will be uh, chicken Maryland served with the vegetables and uh, um, spinach and um, um, we shall bake some potatoes with cheese and tomatoes also for the accompaniment and uh, right now we want to start as we're going to start we will start by uh, uh, preparing our tomato into perry whereby we will make tomato sauce out of it so our tomato sauce is going to contain zucchini it will contain green pepper and then it will contain some onions and then some some mushrooms and then it will contain some garlic and then black pepper and and uh, some vegetable oil so for us to start we're going to put on our we have blended the tomatoes already which is in the blender there so we're going to turn it into a saucepan whereby we will add in some minced meat whereby we will make meat sauce out of it. So let's start. We are starting by adding the tomato peri into the saucepan. You add the tomato peri into the saucepan. Let me add tomato paste spoons here, like 
four tablespoons of tomato paste. So here we have our minced meat, which we're going to add into the tomato puree to make the minced meat, minced sauce. Mm -hmm. Add into that saucepan some zucchini. We need to add some zucchini into the saucepan. So we're going to add the zucchini into the we're going to add the zucchini into the into the tomato puree to make the mint sauce because it will add some a pinch of salt and a, a pinch of pepper We are going to cut some mushrooms to add them to the sauce too because I like I like my main sauce with mushrooms. As our meat sauce is cooking, and uh, we shall start by cutting our chicken so that we start preparing our meat sauce, which is the chicken Maryland. Normally, we can use local chicken uh, or a broad chicken, but this chicken is broad chicken. And you can not, you you know that broad chickens are very hard to prepare, and you have to be very careful when you're working with them, and uh, make sure that you prepare them well so that uh, your customers don't get disappointed while preparing it. Because if you don't prepare it properly, you may find that they may find a mistake in the broad chicken as they will be eating it. So we are going to work on it. Most times, uh, one piece of one whole chicken like this can be cut into four parts. You don't have to cut it into small particles. They have to be cut into four parts. So we're going to start by cutting them. So we'll cut this into, into four, four parts. We will add some vinegar to give it a taste. I'm adding like four lit or maybe four tablespoons. I'm adding little because I'm also going to use some lemon. If I add too much of it, uh, the chicken will be too shower. Maybe there are kids who are going to eat so that they will also enjoy them. So this is our soy sauce. We're adding it so that it also give the chicken taste. You know, since it's a grilled chicken, if you don't add this marinades, your chicken will be tasteless. So you need to add things whereby the grilled chicken can get its taste. So I'm adding some chicken stock too. The chicken stock will improve the taste of the chicken too. It will improve the, the taste so much. I'm adding like a, a tablespoonful. 
you don't need to use too much of it because it's so salty and so the soy sauce also has salt and we're also going to season it with salt so you have to be generous when you're using that chicken stock then our lemon and we're going to squeeze it out and strain it so that the seeds do not drop into the sauce we're using one lemon you can use to two it depends if you want it a bit shallow but right now we're going to have children we're going to have kids around so we're not going to use too much of the lemon and we're going to add in some glass of water so that we put it on fire it will steam whereby the chicken will absorb the flavor of the ingredients okay. so we have a, a glass of water i'm not going to add all this glass of water since the broiled chicken is a bit too tender so we just need a little bit like half a cup of this so that it can steam a bit that's just enough i'm adding a little bit of um, ray core powder into the chicken and then i'm adding a bit of salt not too much of it because we already have soy sauce there we have soy sauce uh, which was salty we have uh, um reiko also has salt and uh, uh, the chicken stock also is salty so we have to be very careful when we're adding the salt so right now our sauce is ready to go on boil so we're bringing it to the boil covered so we're going to cook this for about uh, we're going to cook this for about 20 to 15 to 20 minutes then when it's ready when the, the water is already drained we shall get it out so we shall go to the next process as our chicken is steaming, uh, as it's steaming, we're having a bowel here and a whisker, and we have some eggs. I'm not going to use all the eggs, I just need some few eggs from there. And then I have some slices of bread. I would prefer the white bread, but now I have brown bread, but still can still use it. And uh, so we're going to, this is going to be for the coating of the chicken Maryland. To make the chicken into Maryland, we need the... Uh, we need bread into crumbs. We need some eggs. I just need maybe like three eggs or two. I'm going to start with the two. So if it's not enough, we shall add more because I don't want the eggs to go on waste. So the eggs are already whisked, they are ready, ready for cutting our chicken Maryland. And then we have our slices of bread. We're going to make them into crumbs. So for you to make bread crumbs, you can wrap the, the bread in between your palm, make the bread into powder. crumbs are ready ready for the Maryland so we shall set it aside we have this spinach this spinach most times it's not familiar to to us the people of Arua it's the people of Congo who use a lot of this kind of spinach but they are very tasty and they are so lovely when you prepare them with meat they give you very good flavor into the meat they are already washed, the spinach is already washed and they are clean before, so I'm just going to trim them and cut them so that we can make our vegetables for camp and uh, the chicken Maryland. Our spinach is already cut here, then we are going to add it into the frying pan. The spinach is done, so the onions, then the garlic, not too much garlic because it will be too much, then we, we need some salt, just like a pinch of salt, not too much like a half spoon is enough, 
then uh, some vegetable oil not too much because some people don't like oil like two of this lid is enough so the spin i've not added water there this kind of spinach has a lot of water in it it's it, the the moment we will put it to boil you'll find that it will the heat will release a lot of water from it to just cook using that water which will come out of the vegetables We have prepared the, we have steamed the chicken Maryland and then we need some accompaniment for the chicken Maryland. Most times people can serve the chicken Maryland with the french fries which is chips and then sometimes you can prepare potato salads to serve it with, even sometimes you can serve it with chapati, whatever your choice with. But this time I don't want to serve it with a french fry or chapati but I just need some uh, baked potatoes with cheese because Today everything is cheesy. I just love cheese. That's why I want to use cheese to bake my what? To bake my potatoes. potatoes and they are ready so ready to boil so I want they're just here so we're just going to boil them like for 10 minutes because the rest will be cooked in the oven remember we're doing three quarts of meal now we're coming to work on our pudding uh, pineapple upside down pudding so we have uh, our mixing bowl here the mixer is here we have flour we have powdered milk then we have margarine and then we have sugar and we have a rising agent then we have preservative it's optional if you don't want to use it you can leave it out so we're starting with the margarine we're going to add the margarine into the what? into the mixing bowl For one cup of margarine, you need one cup of sugar. Then you start whisking this until it's fluffy. So our margarine and sugar, it's already, it has changed color. And then we're going to add in eggs one at a time. We need six eggs for this. We need to put one egg at a time. some rising agent like three tablespoons full a bit of preservative some liquid milk and then some powdered milk to add more flavor like uh, four tablespoonful of powdered milk you can use powdered or liquid so for now we're using liquid vanilla to give it flavor 
I need like two tablespoons because I really need my vanilla flavor in the pineapple upside down. So I'm going to whisk this one again. Pineapple upside down is ready. You can see it here, it's ready. So we need to make syrup for the pineapple upside down. Most times, pineapple upside down has to go with syrup, and the syrup is made out of sugar. So we're going from here, we're going for the syrup. We're going to fry the syrup from there, we shall line them, then we shall put it in the oven to go. Hot Pot, your favorite cookery show. West Nile TV, lighting up the region. favorite cookery show so our baking tin is already greased i would have preferred a uh, metal tin but for now we're using the glass one and then we have our pineapple which has been cut and then it has been sliced it has been sliced and you can see they've made a hole in between so we will line that the baking tin with the with the sliced Pineapples, just like that. Just like that. Just like that. I think four could be fitting here because that thing is not so wide. Then the sugar syrup, which has been melted, it's here, it has been cooked already. That's sugar and water. So we shall just Pour it on the pineapples, just like this. Then the cream can go on top of the what? On top of the pineapple. Just cover the pineapple using the cream. That's just enough because it's going to rise. Leave it there. So we're going to put this in the oven. So let's preheat our oven ready for the pineapple upside down. And the oven has been preheated already. So we'll just because this one doesn't take time to preheat. Pineapple upside down in the oven, it will bake for about 20 to 25 minutes. We have some onion rings, whereby we're going to add on it some um, small amount of butter, not too much. And we're going to bring this to, to the to the what to the boil. We'll fry them a little bit, just they should just be sweating, not browning. We will add in our tomatoes, which will be for our our baked potatoes.
So here is our baking tray and then uh, with our tomatoes which is ready for the potatoes and our potatoes are here they've been steamed a little bit so we're just going to line the potatoes in the baking tray ready for baking we shall spread some mixture of tomatoes and onions on top of the potatoes Then sprinkle with some cheese. Then more potatoes. We just line it just as if you're lining lasagna. Layers of potatoes. We shall finish it with the, a layer of tomato curry. You can add all the remaining curry to the dish. We have to spread it evenly so that it can cover the potatoes. So we're going to take it to the oven to bake for about 15 minutes until the top is brown. So we start again? Yes, we start again. So here's our steamed chicken, which has been steamed with the spices and herbs. And then our beaten egg and our bread crumb. So we are coming to make our Maryland now. We're going to cut this piece of chicken, pieces of chicken, because we have more. We're going to cut them using these two bread crumb and then the beaten egg. So you first pick the the chicken joint, you dip it into the beaten egg. You can see how tender the chicken is now. You have to you have to brush it well so that the chicken can be coated well. So from the beaten egg you take it to the breadcrumb covering it. Cover it well. It's already well covered, so you shake the excess breadcrumb. Then from here, it has to go to the heat, the oil which has been heated in the frying pan. Let's go. Golden brown. Yeah, good. 
from four times. So far. <laughs> We have some le uh, we have to prepare salad to accompany our main dish too. And then here we have some lettuce. This lettuce will be treated first before we prepare them to be eaten raw. Because you know you should it has been from the garden and we have to make sure that they are free from bacteria. So they've really been treated very well. Mm, washed with clean water, rinsed with the with um, filtered water. So they are here, we did this before. You can see the lettuce are here. And the tomatoes are here, the lettuce are here. So we, and the carrots. All these vegetables were treated first before it's eaten. So right now we're going to work on our salads. See the lettuce are here, then the salad, uh, the carrots are here. We have the tomatoes, we have the cucumber, these are for our salads. Then, as I told you, they were all already treated and arranged. Now, we need a bowl where we will prepare our salad from. We're going to tear them, we don't need to cut them using a knife, so we just have to tear our salads. And when washing salads, you should make sure that you wash these angles very well because sometimes if you don't wash them thoroughly. These parts will contain some soil, and where by somebody will get soil, and we have to tear them up just like this. So here is our macaron twist. So we're going to work with the twist. You can find different shapes of uh, sometimes sphere or macaroni or pasta and uh, butterfly shell, kernel, different shapes you can find them. Open it up. The water has been boiled, so it has been seasoned with salt. And we're going to pour it here. It will have to cook for nine minutes, not more than nine minutes. Because if it cooks more than nine minutes, it will become too, too soft and which will not be good. So, there we are. We have white pepper here. We have the vinegar and we have some vegetable oil which is in there. You can preferably use uh, olive oil if you have it. And then uh, mustard cream could go in, but for now I don't need to use mustard cream. If you don't have vinegar, you can use uh, lemon juice for making this kind of dressing. And this dressing, it gives taste to the fresh vegetables so that you can enjoy those vegetables. So that's, there is the vinegar in the bottle. So we need to add a bit of white pepper. Not too much because they can add the rest for them at the table. 
then we need some salt then some sugar just like a, a teaspoonful some crushed garlic then close it while I'm making it in a bottle it's for me to shake it well you just shake it like that and shake it so that you can shake the salt and sugar off so there we are I don't need too much oil that's why you can't see any trace of oil there this we can set it aside and we will use it when we are about to serve we can't add it to the vegetable at this time because the salt and vinegar which is in there will will drain off the water which is from the vegetable and the vegetable will lose its texture so you don't need to add the, the, the dressing earlier you add it when you're about 10 minutes about to serve so right now i will set it aside and wait for the serving time So our pasta is here, it has been boiled for 9 minutes and then we are going to turn it back into the cooking pot then we add on it a bit of oil such that it should not stick until the time when we are about to cook so there we have added oil so that it doesn't stick if you, if you don't add the oil they will stick up and then for the mint sauce, we have the mint sauce here. The mint sauce has been it cooked earlier and it was too thick. You have to dilute it using the water from the pasta, which you use for boiling the pasta. So here I'm adding oil because we had not added oil in the, in the sauce before. So our cheese is here. Since we talked that, we said that we are preparing macaron cheese. So we have the cheese here, which has to go into the pasta if you don't have to add that it has to go to the mint sauce rather if you don't add the cheese into the mint sauce direct you can first serve you take this to the table they can use it use a, a teaspoon for sprinkle sprinkle in the, the cheese on top of the pasta which they have served or else you pour the cheese in the in the into the pan you bake it into the oven whatever you prefer so here is our cheese which is going into the sauce our cheese has gone into the, the mint sauce so we're going to stir it and we're going to bring it back to the to the heat to boil it a bit so that the cheese can melt and which is ready for us to serve our starter hot pot your favorite cookery show yeah so right now before you is our food that has been well served it's ready and we have chef molly here who is responsible for all this palatable dishes you see in front of us. So, um, Chef, would you take us through what you have prepared for us right here? Yeah, thank you. It was, we've been preparing these dishes for our guests and uh, we have three courses of meal here which we are going to present. And uh, we have uh, the starter, which is, uh, we have the starter, which is the macaron with cheese and with mint sauce. And then we have uh, the main meal. The main meal is the chicken Maryland, which is served with uh, chicken Maryland, which is served with uh, with uh, baked cheese potatoes because I love everything cheese. Mm. You can see it there. Then we will end the meal with a uh, sweet, which is uh, pineapple upside down pudding. So here is our this is our this is our this is our this is. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Hot Pot. We are here at the table and uh, you're welcome to join us. Of course, from your television set, we are digging in. All right. Favorite cookery show.